Is God speaking to anybody still? Hear this now. I have heard many people say, nobody can tell me how to live my life. I have my life to live. It is true. Nobody can control how you live your life now. But somebody will demand an account after you die. Say that again. Nobody will control and dictate how you live your life. Nobody. Anything that anybody wants to do with his life, he can do now. But the day is coming where somebody will demand how you lived your life. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and we are going to be reading in verse 6. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and in verse 6. Somebody someday and that someday is not too far is going to ask how you lived your life. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 7 he said then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Dust shall return to dust and the spirit shall return to God who gave it vanity of vanities saith the preacher all is vanity move on to verse 13 of Ecclesiastes 12 and there he says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil God shall bring every work into judgment nobody can tell you how to live but somebody is going to ask you to give an account of your life and to be forewarned is to be forearmed anybody hearing me here today a day is going to come and I like you to note these five things down a day is going to come number one that you are going to give an account of your relationship with your maker how, what was your relationship with your creator while you were on it? The quality of your relationship with your maker. One day, somebody will ask you. Number two, a time is going to come where you will account for what you did with your time and your resources. What you did with your time and your resources shall be accounted for what you did with your time and your resources thirdly you will account for how you related with fellow human beings your relationship the quality of your relationship with people is going to come under divine judgment fourthly how you carried out your assignment, your life assignment, your public services, your life assignment, how you carried it out, you are going to account for your life assignment. And finally, how you lived your life generally. The things you know and the things nobody knows about you will come under judgment when you appear before God. I like everybody to wake up this morning because 
there are so many people who are in eternity right now who are suffering the flames of hell and they wished that they had an opportunity again to hear what you are hearing now so they can make their way right with God but for them all hope is lost am I speaking now let me come home now what quality of time you have to serve God the things that occupied your life while you are on earth you will account for it the fact that somebody had no time for God no time for prayer no time for worship no time for church and yet God said these people I formed them for myself Isaiah 43 21 I formed them for myself they don't exist for themselves I formed them for myself and yet the young man has the time for nightclub disco parties time for family meetings time to, to, to while away with several other things the way and manner a person spends his time in this world he will account for it he will account for it because your lifetime is a present from God how you got your money how you got your money did you shed human blood to get that money how did you earn your living did you trample on the heads of people in order to go up how you end your money did you falsify receipts to earn your money are you fraudulent or corrupt every penny that entered your hand did you get it justifiably at the end of the day there will be an account an account is a financial world. Are you following what I'm saying here today? You see, by the time people appear before God, then those things that people say, it doesn't matter. It will now matter very well. One of our staff went to the market yesterday, as I heard, to buy something from somebody and by the time they have negotiated the price and now this person said to her so how much should I write on the receipt and she said is something wrong with you how much did we agree are you planning to write something different from what we agreed and that is the corrupted generation we live in everybody who succumbs to such and everybody who presented such an offer of temptation both of them are in danger of eternal damnation the money may be five naira it may be one thousand or it may be one billion it doesn't make any difference are you following what i'm saying here how did you get the money that you are spending the car you are driving the things that you have how did you get it everybody is going to one day tell God how they got it and for many of us that are placed in charge of people the way and manner we administer the people we are going to account for it as I stand here right now the quality of messages that I preach to the people that sit every week in this church I will account for it before God whether I told the truth or I withheld the truth. Whether, whether, whether I warned people that there is a heaven and there is a hell. And told people to live right or not. I will account for it. If I was preaching only to make people happy. And to make people excited. And I was preaching only in order for people to gather. So that um, we, I don't, we don't lose people. I will, I will account for it every governor of every state will account for the people and the money under him in that state 
every president of every nation will account for the resources committed into his hand and account for the people that are under his care if he decided to eat the money and then to misrule the people and then to allow the people to wallow in suffering while he enriches himself at the expense of the suffering of the people he is going to give account to the one before whose face the heaven and the earth fled and there was no room for them the one that is called the consuming fire the lion of the tribe of judah he is going to account one day that local government chairman will account that person that is moving up and down in, in office but is killing the people under him participating in kidnapping and ritual killing he is going to give the account of all the people he is killing under him one day to a judge that cannot be bright one day one day one day in a court a judicial system where lawyers cannot stand to defend anybody one day one day one day one day he will get a judgment that cannot be reversed and it doesn't matter how many times that person went to church or whether he sits as an elder a pastor a leader whoever he is a day is going to come that he is going to give an account of how he administered the people under him are you hearing me except he repents before he dies every one of us now will give account of this body god says i gave you a healthy body what did you put in that body every every tobacco smoke that enter into this body to defile and to suffocate the spirit of god a man is going to account for how he he massacred and butchered the body every drunkard that is oppressing his liver with alcohol is going to account for the damage being done to the body every cocaine addict and every heroin addict and every lsd taker and every marijuana smoker that is quenching the body the precious body that god said my body my, your body is my temple everybody is going to account am i speaking to somebody your body your body what you did with your body the fact that you, you are sleeping with a man a woman that is not your wife or your husband and you are defiling this body without repentance there is going to be an account given to God are you following what I'm saying you must make up your mind that no weakness of the flesh is strong enough to take you to hell you must make up your mind and for my dear sisters the way and manner you present this your body as an advertisement for the devil to take people to hell you will account for it the reason why you are dressing the way you are dressing you will tell God when you meet him you will tell him that you have to expose your breast so that a, a, a weak brother or sister or brother will look at that breast and then go and look for who to commit immorality with on your account when you get to eternity you will tell god why you left your chest open like that nobody can tell you how to dress here yes but somebody will ask you what was your motive the motive why you 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 you, you, you just wanted your, your your bust and your buttocks and every department of your body to be out like that in order to become a traffic for people to go to hell when you meet god you will tell him the reason for your dressing you may be a pastor's wife it doesn't matter you may be a leader in church it doesn't matter you may you may dress sanctimoniously to church on sunday and dress like a jezebel to your office god is still watching are you following what i'm saying here today because there are some people who will not wear corrupt things to church but they will wear it to the office they will wear it to to, to, to their neighborhood they wear it everywhere and god is watching you and and, and and unbelievers are watching you and the way and manner you are sending people to hell like that you will you will you, you will account for it 
I was reading a book. What is the name of the woman? Somebody baked her. M M Mary Lynn Be Mary Baker. A divine revelation of, of hell. And she said, Jesus came to her and took her for 60 uh, 30 to 60 nights. Every night, Jesus took her to heaven, I mean to hell, and showed her the revelation of how hell looks like. She said one time in the course of that, Jesus left her alone. And then the demons rushed for her and caused her to feel what people feel when they enter hell. She said when she came out for days, she could not recover from it. But this is what she said. She said there is a place that they call Fun Center in hell. Fun Center. Now, in part, as part of the torment, some people are brought to the arena. And then all the people, those people sent to hell, will gather around them and torment them. Inside the hellfire. That is everybody that a witch killed. And then he went to hell because he was not born again. They will gather around that witch one day to torment the witch inside hellfire for sending them to hell. Everybody that an adulterer or adulteress took to hell. Everybody that a seducing spirit dressed in seduction took to hell. One day, those seducers will gather around the person and say, it was you that made me to miss heaven. They will torment them on top of the torment of the fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? What you do with your body may be a private issue, but it's going to have an eternal consequence. Are you following what I'm saying here? And I am speaking with such a passion because I don't want my worst enemy, anybody who hates me with a passion, I don't want him to spend one second in hell. If you understand what hell is all about, you don't want your worst. In fact, my prayer about witches have changed. I'm telling you the truth. And I'm going to tell you that at the end of this service. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you that. It, the person you hate the most you hate the person the worst you won't like him to stay one second in hell if you understand what hell is all about that is why i preach with such a passion not a hatred but a passion to beg you not to go to hell there are some churches where 99 percent of people will find themselves in hell in some places the pastor will join them there for not telling them the reality of the word of god for pampering people to hell the fact that the man is not living right and he is unable to tell the truth and he's trying to tell the people what they want to hear is he not is it not true that after the close of some church service when people come out and you look at some of the sisters and some of the brothers, you would think it was a party that closed. Am I communicating? You would think that nightclub just ended. You would think that people just closed from disco. Some very wicked skirts. Some very demonic chest. Some very tight kind of demonic things. Why will the church that is a salvation center become a seduction center? Why will somebody run from sin in the world and come and meet with sin in the church? He ran away from the world, running from sin. He ran into the church encountering sin. There are demonic agents that sit in church services dressed like Jezebel and then they will be sending notes to some men at their side and passing across some satanic demonic notes some to people's husbands let me say this to every young girl every every marriage you assisted to break by your adulterous lifestyle 
you don't like any men except they are married now sleeping with somebody you didn't marry is sin enough but to, to now become the agent breaking homes the man's heart is with you it has left his wife and then you finish with that one you went to another family the man doesn't have you again but he's looking for another woman to continue from where he stopped with you by the time you enter eternity you will tell God why you are the one that decided to put asunder what God has joined together he said what God has joined together let no man no woman no father-in-law no mother-in-law no sister-in-law no friend and no adulteress let no man put asunder is somebody hearing what I'm saying here today I believe that you must be aware that there is an appointment and you must also be aware that there is a judgment I preached on Sunday anybody who was not here on Sunday I beg you pick the message it is called the hell way of bitterness when you appear before God you will give you will tell God why you vowed never to forgive your brother never to forgive your mother your sister never to forgive a man or a woman because he said forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us forgive us our trespasses if you have never seen in your life everybody born into this world the holiest man of God has seen before for all have seen and falling short of the glory of God if you have not sinned in your life then hold your brother's sin against him then hold your sister's sin against, against her but if you have ever sinned in your life and you couldn't release your mother your father your mother-in-law your sister your boss in the office and the relation if you are you are you are playing around hellfire everybody who dies in bitterness dies in unforgiveness against anybody and it doesn't matter what the person did straight to hell you know there is a doctrine that churches have taught today and many of us pastors we are guilty of it and it is the doctrine of let the enemy die do you understand what I'm talking about well, the Bible, in the Bible, there are enemies that God killed. Herod, Pharaoh, and several Haman, many of them died. And judgment is with God. There is what to do. But the problem with the matter is, it generates in the heart of the people a very terrible spirit of bitterness I don't, I don't know if I'm communicating a very terrible spirit of bitterness so everybody you suspect to be against you you are bitter against him to a point where you won't, you, you won't even talk to the person if he greets you you won't answer that is the road to hell sir And I am saying this, I am saying this because it is possible for a matter, a truth to be overstretched. You just took it to the other side. Where, oh, anybody who uh, looks at you somehow in, in the office is an enemy. So you have people surrounded with enemies everywhere. While the real enemy, Satan the devil, is laughing. We have left the devil to begin to deal with people. Hear this now. There is no real human being who wants to drink another person's blood. 
Is there any human being on earth? Every blood drinker is possessed with a blood sucking demon. And we have not been talking to the demon. And we have been killing the people. I am going to come to that later. We have not, the, the demon. And we have been praying, fall, die, fall, die, die, fire. You know, and, and, and now these are people. And they are going to hell. And hell is not for one day. There are hardened people that will definitely die and go to hell. There are people in covenant with Satan. They made up their mind to live forever with Satan. Those people, God will kill them. The Bible says the evil of the wicked will slay him. While we try to handle the wicked, let us be careful of the spirit of bitterness. I don't know if somebody understands what I'm talking about. Let us be careful with the spirit of bitterness. Bitterness. The spirit of bitterness. Hear me. The way and manner you treat fellow human beings, you will stand one day and tell Jehovah, am I speaking to somebody here? Many, many of us, we regard ourselves, but we care not for nobody. The love, the quality of love in our hearts for human beings, one day will we'll stand before God and talk about it. The, the, the driver is a person and the roadside cleaner is a human being. Are you follow what I'm saying? And the toilet cleaner is a human being. The office clerk is a human being. In the eyes of God, we are not at a higher level than any other human being. And so when we handle human beings created in the image of God as if they are not human beings, when we fail to put ourselves in the shoes of people, when we appear before God, we give account of it. That is why the judgment of every ritual killer, you don't know that there are different torments in hell. Everybody trading in human body. And you call yourself a ritual killer. Or an armed robber. Or a hired assassin. Or you are a doctor who is a specialist in aborting children for people. Or you are, and you are a nurse who is satisfied to work in an abortion clinic. And you are a, 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 a surgical attendant and you are happy to walk in such a place by the time you appear before jehovah you will he will ask you who gave you the license to take another person's life if you want to take life why don't you take your own you enjoy living you enjoy eating and you feel like another person should be shot and die you feel like another person's tongue or, or ear or, or head should be used as a sacrifice who gave you the audacity to enjoy your own life while you are taking other people's lives you want to enjoy your own life but that person should die before his time Every politician who, 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 who goes to the occultic realm to kill human beings in order to secure political power, you are under a very terrible judgment. Do you know I heard something one day? The man of God, Moses Maduba, he told the story. It's in Potaco. He said it was it was it, it was reliably gathered. During one of those political campaigns and electionary process, a politician governor of a state sent his military, his talks, political talks with God. And they went into the maternity of a hospital and snatched newborn babies from the mother at gunpoint because the occultic ritual demanded that newborn babies that are not yet more than one day old should be snatched from the mothers they snatched it at gunpoint the man of God said some of the women that they are to follow them we are shot down and they carried these children and then took them to the place sacrifice it's a 
kind of country we are living in place of sacrifice and one man of God told me from one of those states he said he reliably gathered that one day in a particular government house they imported deaf people and dumb people from some part of the country and brought them there blindfolded them and gave them pestle to, to pound those children inside and then they, they, they what came out of it was used for political power can you see the judgment of this generation do you see that, what I'm talking about and what we are talking about some of those people we are talking about it's not that they, they come out and say I'm an, I'm an occultist some of them pastors pray for them some of them come to church and then they give them microphone excellency so and so is in service today can he say a word to the people and then he comes carries the microphone and says uh, uh, praise the lord the lord is good i tell you i cannot be in this office if not for god i tell you this and that this was a man that just left a blood sucking meeting last night is handling the microphone in the church of God desecrating the temple I heard of a place in one of the states of this country where a woman has carried young girls from the road and she has captured them in her place and then will carry area boys from the road to come and help her impregnate the girls and then the girls would deliver babies and the babies belong to the matron of the place and then they will settle the young girls 20,000 10,000 to go and then these babies now are there for sale for sale to ritualist to anybody who can buy baby boy maybe three fifty thousand baby one young man came here before with the magazine because he revealed it in that state they began to look for him to kill him the very government there patronizing that place began to look for him to kill him he ran to abuja ran to abuja came to this place show us showed us the picture you remember that young man are you following what i'm saying here today who told you that you can like your own life and then take another person's life hear me that devil inside you you must reject that devil otherwise your torment in hellfire is unbearable 